Georgia, and in particular, welcome to Gripviken. I'm sure you all know that Gripviken and South Georgia are one of the most far-flung uh, human habitations uh, on the planet. Not many people do get here. And we're here this morning to pay homage to one Sir Ernest Shackleton. He was known to most that knew him simply but affectionately as the boss. Now, as has been said in some recent lectures, you know, Shackleton's life was really one disaster after another. And it should come as no surprise that we Brits, we actually celebrate our disasters, whether they're personal <laughs> or whether they're national. And if you look at Shackleton's life, his life was a series of disasters. He was supposed to be an explorer. He never found anything. He never <laughs> discovered anything. He was never first anywhere. And yet, men would follow him to the ends of the earth. And of course, women, and he had lots, loved him. At one point in his career, Shackleton found himself just 97 miles short of the South Pole. Fame and glory was in, within his grasp, and yet, he knew that he did not have supplies to get to the pole and get back. And the greatness of this man Shackleton can be found in that very gesture. Shackleton never put fame or personal glory in front of the safety and the welfare of his men. Shackleton led by example. He was always the one to do without that blanket. He was always the one who was last at the meal pot. So his life, a series of tragedies, and yet he would turn his greatest tragedy into his greatest triumph. Like a Greek tragedy, Shackleton was charged with three impossible tasks. And his great tragedy, the catching of his ship, the Endurance, in the pack ice of Antarctica, and its eventual sinking 11 months later, would be his greatest adventure of all time. So his first impossible mission was to get his men and three lifeboats from the Antarctic pack ice, having spent almost a year out on those frozen wastes. On empty stomachs, these men toiled across the empty frozen landscape of Antarctica to complete the first impossible task, and that was to get his men all safely to Elephant Island. So task number one was completed. His second impossible mission, a journey that is still regarded as perhaps the greatest open boat journey of all time. An 800 mile journey across storm tossed seas, ice filled waters to reach King Hacken Bay here at South Georgia, but on the wrong side of <laughs> South Georgia. It took him 16 days to complete that 800 mile journey. And now came his third impossible task, a task that the hardened Norwegians even thought to be impossible. And that was the crossing of South Georgia. You've seen the mountains yourself. You've seen the glaciers. You've seen the jagged, wind-torn peaks. And yet, in typical Shackleton fashion, he took a single rope. He took a carpenter's axe. He took 36 hours of supplies and set off to cross South Georgia. He, of course, eventually arrived at Stromness. He raised the alarm and after several failed attempts, managed to rescue every single one of his 22 men that had been stranded at South Georgia. Sorry, at Elephant Island. And so ended the greatest Antarctic adventure of all time. Stated quite simply, Ernest Shackleton was the greatest hero in an age of heroes. No person quite ever came up to his standards. And you know, my tiny island nation has produced many fine leaders, but Sir Ernest Shackleton is regarded by many as the greatest leader that we, our tiny island nation of Great Britain, has ever produced. Perhaps Priestley said it best when he compared the three great Antarctic explorers and he penned the immortal words, for speed and efficiency of travel, give me Amundsen. For organization and scientific discovery, give me Scott. 
But when disaster strikes and all hope fades, get down on your knees and pray for Shackleton. Ladies and gentlemen, to the boss. To the boss. And this is especially important because this year is the 100th anniversary. So this is a special day indeed. Just think, a hundred years ago today, Shackleton was almost at Elephant Island with the open boat journey and the crossing of this island still to do. He was, without doubt, the greatest hero of them all. The boss. The boss. Cheers. I always give him a bit. <laughs> Something I've done for all 170 or so voyages that I come here. <laughs> okay, folks. I think. Yeah.